With us now to discuss is the National Review's editor-in-chief, Rich Lowry. He is also the author of The Case for Nationalism. Rich, thanks for being here on the Hill. Hey, uh, we appreciate me. the time. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, read some of the, the case there. Break it down for us in English. Uh, what, what's, what's the argument that you're making as to why you yeah, think well, Jack Smith there's, overstretches there's balance? No yeah, there's no doubt the underlying conduct here is infamous. It's damnable. It's impeachable. Uh, there's a reason he was impeached for this. But the indictment from where we sit seems to be just an effort to redo the impeachment since it, it failed, or at least he wasn't convicted in the Senate and stretch the criminal law for that political purpose. And that's just wrong. You know, what you what you want from your criminal justice system is clear lines where someone knows they're committing a crime. There's no doubt about it. There's no ambiguity about it. You don't have to be creative, um, stretching the laws to to reach criminal conduct. You want someone to know they're doing something illegal. Uh, we don't think this meets this test. So yes, this conduct's terrible. Just reading it again in the black and white, it doesn't get any better. It's never going to get any better. It's going to be a black spot. Our history for a very long time, but you, you we think, think, this you think Donald Trump did, did nothing illegal from election day up until January sixth? I don't think so. I think he did terrible things. Uh, I think he did uh, committed grave abuses of power that were impeachable, but I don't think he committed crimes. Mark Short uh, was the chief of staff to Mike Pence at the time. Was named by title in the indictment yesterday. I spoke to him afterwards, uh, Rich, and he sort of made the case that there was a, a, a pressure campaign from Christmas when President Trump picked up the phone and called Mike Pence and said, Merry Christmas, and oh, by the way, we got to work on this thing, <laughs> um, right. and, and January 6th, that two-week stretch. I want you to listen to what Mark Short told me, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Well, I think that the pressure campaign really ratcheted up between Christmas and January 6th, to be honest, because um, I think for many of us, we assume that you run the legal course. And when the Electoral College meets and makes a decision on December 14th, that's the end of the chapter. Uh, so I think that it, it, it kind of it reached that point and it was kind of quiet. And then somewhere around Christmas, the pressure campaign picked up because I think some nefarious voices told the president that the vice president can can be his saving grace here in ways that, that I just think were misleading. You take no issue with the way that Donald Trump tried to pressure the vice president of the United States to overturn the election. Oh, I take major issue with it. I mean, it was it was the worst part of this scheme. It was the the one one pressure point that had potential to work if just one man buckled. Fortunately, he didn't. Mike Pence did the the right thing, and I think we'll be honored for that throughout American history. So th this is this is the the key point. Just because you're saying something's not illegal or shouldn't be indicted because it's ambiguous doesn't mean you think the underlying conduct is good. I mean, we we from day one in real time were condemning. All, all of this, right. and regarding you know the, the the punditry about the two statements we heard from Pence and DeSantis, I hail what Mike Pence said there. He's he's right. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily going to work for him, unfortunately, in the primary because there's about 25 percent of the Republican Party who, who wants to hear that message or is open to it. But he's absolutely correct. So, Rich, real, real quick before we let you go, then uh, the Mar-a-Lago documents case, um, Donald Trump guilty there in your eyes. Yeah, I think he's totally nailed on that. I don't think there's any legal defense on that. I think what he'll do is an attempted political defense, one, delaying the case, and then hoping something comes up. Either he gets elected president again, or there's a Republican who will pardon him for those offenses, or failing all of that, that there's a Republican or two on that jury who just won't convict no matter what. Right. All right, Rich Lowry, great to talk to you. Uh, Thanks so much for Editor-in-chief of the National Review. Yeah, come on back here on the Hill. We appreciate the time. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.